Hello Tark, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Max Effort Deadlift Day. And today was one of those learning lessons. We're going to talk about it quite a bit in detail. we got to get my deadlift back up. But for those of you who like these sort of videos, please remember to click like down below. Uh, we have not been keeping the likes higher than the dislikes in these. Only you guys can do that. Uh, for anyone who doubt the bots, I tossed up some of the proof on my Facebook fan page. Absolutely the case. So, over to the point. After you click like, couldn't pull this, right? 67 pounds of chains, couldn't get it moving. Uh, where did I feel it? My mid-back. Absolutely mid-back, unable to lift the weight. I've detrained that area. So we need to have a long talk about accessory movements. What's one thing I've beat into people's heads for a while? Good mornings will build your deadlift. They were one of the biggest lifts to getting me back to 615. Now, what have I done in the last few weeks? I've replaced them with reverse hypers. Replaced them with reverse hypers, and I feel like the reverse hyper is phenomenal for low back, hamstrings, all of that. My deadlift weakness had been the hamstrings. We started bringing hamstrings up, and I got through my sticking points. We saw it with a couple of big lifts a couple weeks ago, uh, including my 615 PR, which was easy. Here's the problem. We have to be able to assess our weak points objectively. We have to look at our supplemental lifts, and if our supplemental lifts are going up, and our PRs are not, or they start going down, we're not addressing our weaknesses. Okay. Before my deload was the last time I really did good mornings. I did them the day after I got back from a deload, the only time, haven't done any in two weeks. We're seeing a regression, and I'm feeling the whole mid-back, not the lower erectors, the middle erectors, right? All at the base of the rib cage. That whole area is starting to give out on pulling, okay? After hitting two big PRs, but here's the thing, it takes about two weeks to see detraining, right? We know this. I was still in the detraining phase when I got that 595 against a good amount of chains. I was still in the detraining phase when I pulled an easy 615 and held it. So, what do we mean we have to be objective in assessing this? I've said before, the good mornings were a big key in me re in building this deadlift up. I quit doing them, and I try to replace them with something that only does part of what they do, that does other things better. What happened? We're seeing regression. Everything else has gone up. Now, people say, well, didn't you cut the hip thrust? Well, I did, but it's only been a week, and I PR'd the last time I did hip thrusts. I did glute bridges four days ago, and I hit a PR. Okay? All right, that's the first time I've ever hit that weight for five sets of ten. My glutes are ridiculously strong. Okay, My middle erectors, thoracic erectors, all of that area, they are detraining quickly because they're not getting any real work. Okay. I'm PRing my rows, which are important. I'm PRing everything else. If those were really my real weak links, my deadlift would be going up. And I'm not feeling my hamstrings. I'm feeling my quads. Some people say, well, quads could matter breaking it right off the floor. Yeah, but I just did quad work two days ago. It was middle back, and I can absolutely tell. And me doing really high rep sets with even 135 really took my deadlift up another notch. I feel like I got a good 20 plus pounds out of my deadlift. My grip is no longer a weak link. So we've got to build the back. And that's where it can be deceiving because my whole back looks jacked. Lats, traps, everything else. Even my erectors are technically good. Those mid-erectors though. Okay. The good mornings have to be a staple. And I'm going to have to do them. They may even be affecting my squat. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get the exact rotation into my squat day. And I think I know I'm going to make it all work. Basically, guys, the good morning, it's not that it's more magical than some other lifts. It's that we can work the entire back, top to bottom, all the erectors, glutes, hamstrings, with an exercise that we can do enormous amounts of volume on and recover from. That is the magic of it. It is a hip hinge that works all of those areas. I might even need to go back to doing safety bar ones. I'm going to have to build my neck up a little to do that because it gives me a headache. 
So I may need to do a little bit of neck work with my harness. Not all three directions like these guys do that will cause you to not be able to breathe. And yes, that is the downside to neck training. It does cause sleep apnea. That's a fact. But if I only work that one neck plane, should be safe. I may need to do that. I've got a harness. I can do it. Just so I can have some variation here. But I'm going to have to continue to beat good mornings up. Okay, I'm going to have to do tons of them. Because I think I'm starting to feel the difference on my squat now. On top of it. These have to stay in. And I can still do hip belt squats to do quads. These have to stay in. I'm going to keep doing the reverse hypers for the back restoration, the prehab, everything else. Good morning's going to have to stay in. And I'm going to have to do a ton of them. Like I was doing when I was hitting the big squat PRs every week. Or I mean the deadlift on top of it. All right, they can't be removed. And I said that before, they're not an optional exercise. They really shouldn't be. I wanted to experiment, see if the reverse hyper could replace them. Can't. And when I started doing these, the whole area of my back that was giving out on the deadlift that I felt hurt, lit up, and the whole thing is sore. Right now, even though I'm voicing over and I just finished training, the whole area is sore, it's fatigued, it's not used to the work. Okay, so if these good mornings, going back to my old work sets from just a few weeks ago, are fatiguing me to the extreme in the areas of my back that I felt unable to lift the weight, I've detrained. And it happens fast with some of this stuff, guys, and that's what you have to remember. All right, it's not like when you're an intermediate lifter, guys, when you technically have a deadlift that's elite on the charts, something detrains it's going to be noticeable immediately. And that's exactly what happened. So we have to address that. And I have to go, okay, I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger on the glute bridges and the hip thrusts. My lifts were not going up. I took the, I take the good mornings out and I continue to PR on those lifts. Nothing went up. All right. What's that tell us? Now we know we need these glute ham raises because I need more hamstring. The good mornings will help with the hamstrings too, though. I've got to address these things. I don't need glute specific training. All my training hits glutes. Look at everything I do. Everything hits glutes in one way or another that I do. And I got absurdly strong glutes. I do 505 for 5 by 10 on glute bridges. It was about to go up in weight and take it up another 5 pounds a day. Okay, it's not making my deadlift go up. It means it's not my weak link been hamstrings now turned into back well fortunately the back fix works both uh, now some people say oh what's up with that easy angle on the hyperextension is that really working hamstrings yes yeah, working hamstrings the I have it on an easier setting because when I first got this thing I could only do five reps on this easy setting with just my body weight before my hamstrings cramped so hard I couldn't walk okay so I upped the band today and now that I can do the next heavy band up for sets of ten this is how we build progressive overload, guys. The glute ham raise has built-in progressive overload. It lets you adjust the pad. I take it to the next hardest setting and work with that. And then increase bands, increase reps. And when I can do, again, 5 by 10 with the blue band, not the red band. The red band's lighter. What do we know? We know that we need to go to the next hardest setting. Okay. We build progressive overload this way by the more difficult settings as far as bringing the pad further closer to the feet. But it's still hamstring, particularly against the band. Your hamstrings are contracting against that band hard, especially as you go up. And that's what I want. So that's going to be the process for the glute ham raise, progressive overload. Build jacked hamstrings. But, you know, we're not on the easiest setting, but it's easier. Yeah. So then we move it in a notch. We'll take it a couple inches closer. We restart the process. Keep building hamstrings. And considering that I just did all those good mornings first, I'm happy with that. But the thing is, guys, I'm going to have to do the, the, the good mornings. And I'm going to have to work them in on squat. And even as I look at it, I don't know that I need box squats. Why well, compress my spine more? Do I really need axial loading outside of my max squats and deadlifts? Not really. I can build my entire erectors up with good mornings. 
reverse hypers. Right, I build all the support muscular for the squat and deadlift. I don't need to load my spine. No point in impeding recovery. In fact, maybe the extra box squat difficulty of doing those sets with 412 after my heavy squat might have impeded recovery today. Maybe it fatigued my back even more. Again, the extra axial loading, not necessary. Save it for the big lifts. But I am going to have to build my entire spine. Okay, all the muscles of the spine have to be built up top to bottom. Get that deadlift back up. Because the rows, I'm still at a PR weight. Right, these are going up. My grip is improving. I just did my pinch blocks after I did the rows and curls. Pinch blocks are holding strong after this. Right, I need to start adding more weight again to my pinch blocks. There's another two and a half pounds. Grip is improving. Not a weak link. So we got to do what works. We, we've got to use the things that we know build my deadlift and then other supplemental stuff to keep shoring up weak links. But that was kind of the test for me. It's like I've been PRing on hip thrust and glute bridge and I'm just now pulling the hip thrust out. After PRing it, deadlifts are struggling. Squats are almost starting to struggle. Glute bridge, just PR'd. PR'd four days ago. Easy PR. Okay, it's not my glutes. It's erectors. Rectors and then hamstrings. Now, as far as quads go, we know I need more quad for my squats, so we're addressing quads on squat day, so that'll be along for the ride for, for deadlifts. And honestly, here's what it comes down to. Anything that increases my deadlift tends to increase my squat, as long as my quads don't struggle. And we're going to do supplemental quad work. So, um, again, have to be objective with these things. And it's like I tell you guys, man, Max effort day is where we go to school. It's where we assess. It's where we learn. It's where we figure out where our weaknesses are. Okay, it tells us everything about our weaknesses, and it doesn't have to be the classic lifts. That came up the other day, too. Someone said, well, if you find a weakness on the pause squat, it only tells you what your weakness is on the pause squat, not your stretch reflex squat. That's not how it works. Because any major weakness on any variation means that it's a weakness. You just didn't detect it as easily. The variations let us go through parts that have different emphasis, and when we find glaring weaknesses on a variation, it damn well is a weakness on the main lift, too. It's just not quite detectable. It's not 100% detectable. It's when we switch to a variation that uses it just a little bit more in the ratio, and then it really comes out. But that whole, the mid-back, and when I say the mid-back, we're not talking about the lats. Okay, I am talking about the spine, I'm talking about erectors, I'm talking about mid traps, lower traps, and the erectors all through that area, right? They were given out. Everything was given out through that there. That's where I felt it. And incidentally, it happens to be the area that really, really gets trained hard for me on the good morning that I don't really do much else for. So we've got to do the good mornings. We have to do it. And of course, we did our curls. Uh, reps started getting lower as I went on these. I managed to hit 20 on the first one, but I've increased the weight last time. Uh, I was down to like 13, I think, for the last couple sets. Because I took real short breaks. Just want to get there. Because I don't care. We just need to hit failure on these. We just need to generate fatigue in the biceps. Okay, they're doing tons of rowing. This is just my fatigue work. Get a good pump. Get a good burn. This is a smaller muscle, and this is just workload for it. Okay, my biceps get a lot of work on rowing. This is to make sure they're growing. And it's working. I, I feel like I feel my biceps on this. Uh, we've covered why in the past. We, we've covered the injuries. Uh, they should be working. And if my biceps are growing or not, who really knows? It's going to be slow. They're not just going to, I'm not just going to add two inches to my arm, guys. I'm an advanced lifter. Not going to happen overnight. I'll just be consistent. Keep putting the fatigue and tension on them. But this, this exercise, I really do feel it very, very intensely there. So we know it's doing something. And notice I come all the way back. All right, we come to full lockout, and I do come back and then bring it forward. Uh, and the reason for that, I want to put a little stretch on the bottom. Since I don't have the, as much weight with it unloaded, I want to make sure we get a stretch there. I want those biceps stretched back. Okay. One, the stretch reflex can help with, obviously, hypertrophy and activation there. They're getting a little bit of stretch. Number two, 
again, we want to be thinking in terms of bicep tears, bicep injury. It's a big deal. We care about that. And yes, I still do a set of the band curls to failure, at least a set, usually just one right now, every day. So, I mean, realistically, even if we don't count the band curls, the seven sets of those I do every week, I'm doing 15 to 20 sets of these curls with the change every week, plenty of bicep work. My arms don't grow off that, they're not gonna grow. Okay, it's just that simple, especially taking them to failure. So, gotta be doing something, not that worried about it. Again, as long as my tendons are healthy and as long as it helps my rows, and it could be, we're happy. That's all that matters. Uh, but, again, we've got to address the weak links. We've got to keep recovery on point. That means careful selection of the movements. I'm not worried about the heaviest weights possible. That's why good mornings are so great. You can get brutally strong off a really, really lightweight through sheer volume on it. It's a phenomenal exercise. That means recovery is easy. Same thing with those hip belt squats. Same thing with a lot of these movements. Same thing with a strict axle bar pin lay row. Getting as much growth as possible and recovering from it in the right places. But good workout learning experience. Happy with the lessons I learned even if I wasn't happy with the lift. I will start seeing PRs again soon. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.